What's up everybody? It's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. It is uh, end of July. It's July 24th now, which means that hunting season is right around the corner. We just finished our events, so if you missed those, make sure that you show up next year. You can check out any events that we have coming up on our Facebook page. Just go look it up. There's a link down in the description. But it is time to start getting into hunting and we are a week away from opening day and that means it's time to start thinking about our gear how we're going to be using it this season and we've been getting a ton of questions about climbing srt um, so instead of answering everybody's questions individually i thought maybe i'll just make a video to show you guys how i get up the tree um, and what my system is for doing that uh, including one sticking or srt and what situations i would use either which one so let's look at my kit and uh, I'll show you how I use it. Before we get into this, I just want to make it incredibly clear that I am not a professional. Swamp and Stomp are not professional tree climbers. We are just hunters and uh, this is a system that we use. We are not uh, saying that this system is the correct system to use. We are simply showing you what we do. If you choose to do anything based on the information in this video, that is on you we are not liable for anything that happens to you while you are using any information that you got from this video so let's just make that incredibly clear in fact i would even advise that you don't use part of this method i use it despite the fact that i understand that it is very dangerous um, and i will put a disclaimer in that part of the video so that you know exactly what part i'm talking about this stuff is dangerous anytime you leave the ground you could get hurt Please know that before you get started, please be as careful as possible. And remember, we are not liable for the decisions that you make when you use this information in the woods. Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't even go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo! What a rush! Money! That deer is dead. Tagged out, baby! <laughs> you shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. So there are two ways that I like to get up a tree. Honestly, my absolute favorite is climbing SRT because it is so safe. You're constantly attached to the tree. Your rope is under tension so you can't fall. And it's just really easy to move yourself up the tree and it's so quiet. There's only one problem with it and that is that you gotta get the rope up in the tree somehow, which is the other method that I really enjoy using is one sticking because it is so simple, it is so lightweight, um, and you don't waste any time. You just get to the tree, you look up, you go, yep, that's where I wanna be, and you can just start climbing. Uh, I've kind of combined both of these into a system that for me is perfect. Maybe you guys wanna adopt the same system. I don't know. I'm gonna show you what I do, and just let me know if you guys have any questions or if you like any of these ideas. So what I'm wearing right now, aside from the fact that I'm not wearing camo, is uh, exactly what I would walk into the woods with. Um, this is my pack with everything that I need for one sticking and SRT climbing. And then I've got my saddle on. This is a Wood Hunting Saddles uh, Deluxe in our uh, High Pine camo, which uh, if you're interested in getting some of the High Pine camo, you can just go to our website. It's uh, www.swampandstompllc.com. Um, it's a pretty sweet kit. Uh, also, the pack that I'm using here, this is the JX3 Outdoors uh, pack. It's really small, but incredibly versatile because it has a lot of straps and stuff so you can attach gear to it. Um, but once you have taken all your gear off, it's really small and compact. Uh, so it works great for scouting, but also for hunting. First things first, this is a question everybody asks, how much does it weigh? This is my pack. Um, this has my one stick in it. It has a platform, it's a pursuit uh, platform. This is a super lightweight platform that I'll be using a little bit this season. I'll also have a heavier platform that I might be using on longer sits, but for those run and gun style sits, I'll be using the Pursuit. And then I have uh, 45 or 50 feet of 9 millimeter SeaTac rope. And if you're interested in this rope, you can get it on the Wood Hunting Saddles website. 
And uh, it, anything on that website, you can get 10% off on if you use our coupon code, which is SNS10. So let's see how much the pack weighs all together. Now keep in mind, uh, I have my knee pads attached to this. I have like a first aid kit and a few other things in here, but I did take my water out or the water pouch is in there, but it's empty. So normally there's gonna be uh, anywhere from two to three liters of water in there, which is gonna add, uh, I don't remember exactly, like eight to 12 uh, pounds. So let's see, We've got this little scale zeroed out. So we're looking at, if you guys can see that, just under 10 pounds for my whole kit. And that is with SRT and one stick gear. But that backpack's not everything that I carry in the woods. I have two big dump pouches. Um, this is, these are the dump pouches that uh, Wood Hunting Saddles makes. They're huge, you can fit all kinds of stuff in there. So I have all kinds of stuff clipped onto my saddle and I'll show you why in just a second. But um, all this together, weighs it's another uh 7.1 pounds so let's break it down i'm gonna show you what i have in here and why on my saddle you'll notice right here i have suspender loops this was one of the things that um i had to have robert wood put onto our signature edition saddle we've got suspender loops all around it because i love using my suspenders i like to run my saddle as if it was basically like a backpack um and because of that i can carry lots of weight in there and, and as i mentioned this thing weighs seven pounds so just show you what i have in my dump pouches um in my right side i would have my camera arm normally but i have a tether and then i also carry a figure eight this is just kind of a backup for for repelling or ascending um, if i lose my uh, belay device and then I have my belay device that I clip sort of on the outside here, a Madrock uh, safeguard. And then I have a friction hitch cord uh, that I keep attached to that as well. A hand ascender uh, with a carabiner that goes with it. Um, and this is essential for SRT climbing. Then on the other side, I carry another tether. And then I have my recliner, my back band, uh, to get nice and comfortable in the saddle. My bow hanger or gun hanger. This is a DIY gun hanger that I made. Lightweight aluminum. It does the trick, I really like it. But there's a number of different ones that you can buy now that uh, do the exact same thing. I always keep my can on me. Never know when you're gonna need it. It stays in the bottom of my pouch just in case. So that's everything in my left pouch. There's still a few other items. Uh, that I keep clipped onto the back. So right here, I've got um, pull-up rope is right here. I just keep some paracord bunched up um, with a little clip on the end, and then I uh, can just clip that off behind me. Um, and then I also have my gear strap, which I guess I can't even really call a strap. It's a gear rope. Uh, this is a paracord gear strap. I have a video up that you can watch on how to make this. It's super effective, it's super lightweight, it's super streamlined, um, and it does everything that you need. Um, it works together with that bow hanger that I just showed you. So I keep that clipped right in the back there for easy access when I'm going up the tree. Let's take apart everything that's in my pack, and I'm gonna show you how I get ready to climb the tree. All right, so let's dig into my pack. Oh, and by the way, if you guys are looking at getting one of these saddles that I'm using, wood hunting saddles or anything wood hunting saddles, uh, you can use our code SNS10 to get 10% off of it. Um, same thing with our JX3 Outdoors. Um, if you want to get this pack or a JX3 uh, hybrid saddle, you can use the code SNS22. And you can find all of these codes down in the description of this video. So as I was saying, one of the reasons I really like this pack is because it's so small, but it has all these straps that you can add gear to. So the first thing I do when I get to, uh, to my spot is I'll take my knee pads off um, and usually I'll just put them on. I'll put those on in just a second so I can keep showing you the pack. And then I'll unclip this front pocket here, which is attached by these straps. So the whole front pocket folds forward, uh, which is great. In here, I've got my out on a limb um, Shakar mini stick that I use to one stick up the tree. And then I've got here a Pursuit Outdoors platform. Now this is a super, super lightweight platform. It weighs, I think like 
I, I can't remember, but I want to say it's like 1.3 pounds. This is a plastic platform and uh, I'll be, it's really small. Like it's not something I would use for like long sits, but it's great for, uh, for run and gun style hunting. So I'll definitely be using this quite a bit this season. And then um, on days that, you know, like I'm going to be doing long sits, I'll use, you know, a more traditional, larger metal platform, but that is going to add a few pounds to my pack. Um, and then my rope right here, this is a uh, blue water rope SeaTac, I believe is what it's called. It's a nine millimeter and you can get this rope um, as well as any of the tethers that I'm using from Wood Hunting Saddles. Um, and Wood Hunting Saddles is such a great brand. It's, uh, it's a Florida company and uh, they're just the nicest people. It's a mom and pop company and they just provide like some of the best uh, climbing and saddle hunting gear that you can get. Um, so I always love to support them. Um, you should check them out. Like I said, you can use the code SNS10 for 10% off on ropes and, uh, and saddles and everything. So this is the rope that I'm climbing. I think this is 45 feet of nine millimeter SeaTac rope. And that's everything that's in the pack. So I'm just gonna toss that aside and we can start getting ready to climb. So when I first started SRT climbing, I discovered how much I love going up the tree. I just feel super safe using it. The one problem that I had was this damn throw ball. If I were to do it right now and try and throw that throw ball up over a limb so that I can girth hitch the tree and climb up it, I'd probably knock it out immediately because I'm in my backyard and I'm chilling. But I go out there and I'm doing it in the dark. I'm trying to be as quiet as possible. Usually like 50% of the time, I just could not get that damn ball to go exactly where I needed it to be. And the fact of the matter is for it to work, you need that tree to be shaped kind of in a like you have to have open limbs and it needs to be relatively easy to get that ball through there and sometimes that's just not the case um, and then you end up like throwing the ball like over and over again trying to get it in the right spot and then it doesn't go through the right spot and you're pulling it through and then it gets tangled up and you just get so frustrated not to mention in order to throw this successfully you need to be standing like a little ways away from your tree so you're standing there at you know 10 yards maybe 5 10 maybe even 15 yards away from your tree throwing this ball and it's florida and you're hot and you're sweaty and you're just dropping your scent like all around in a spot where you could actually shoot it like i said before i want to be able to go straight to my tree and i don't want my scent being anywhere other than right by the tree so you know sure i walk in um, but you're leaving a lot less scent when you walk through a spot than when you stand there doing a bunch of jumping jacks and throwing ropes up in, in the air so that's part of the, those are the reasons that i didn't want to use the throw ball anymore and i sort of came up with a system that i really like and that means getting rid of this throw ball and instead when i go up the first time i use my one stick um, and once I have one sticked up the t to the top of the tree, then my rope is in place and I'll SRT climb the rest of the time. If I go back up the same tree, I'll just SRT climb. And that means that, uh, you know, typical people that SRT climb, uh, sorry, that one stick climb, they won't carry a hand ascender. So they'll usually only carry their belay device because they're only using this to take up line when they go up and then to belay back down because climbing down on a three-step aider sucks. So a lot of people only carry this, but I like to carry this as well because it's the only uh, difference between, you know, typical one stick SRT climbing versus one stick the first time and then SRT the rest of the time. And this, this, is, uh, this hand descender with the carabiner only weighs 0.7 pounds. Totally worth it to me to use this on the second or third climb. It doesn't weigh much. I can stick it in my pouch. All right, so the first thing I like to do when I get to the tree is I'm gonna put my climbing rope on uh, before I put the stick, because it's just a little bit more wiggle room uh, if that sticks off and laying on the ground. I have a quick link on the end of my rope, and then I'm just gonna reach around the tree, and get it as high up as I can get it, and basically just grab a bite around the tree and just whip it up the tree and then take that quick link, put your rope through there and close it back up. And I always try and make sure that the screw gate of the quick link is staying towards the outside of the tree so that it's not rubbing against the tree when that rope is sliding around. And this is gonna prevent 
uh, that screw gate from accidentally opening. So get that up as high as you can. And I always like to keep the, uh, the girth hitch um, sort of cocked a little bit to the right. That's gonna make me sort of hang on the right side of the tree so that I can have my stick uh, sort of off on the left so I can work more freely on the stick. Next up, we're gonna put the stick up on the tree and same thing, just wrap it around the tree. We're gonna get it, I like to get it about as high as I can get it where I can still get my foot into that bottom rung of the uh, aider, just a little bit above my knee is what I like. And then I'll uh, bite that down, just pull on it, make sure that that cam cleat is bit down properly before you start putting your weight on there. And then I'll just flip the tag end over the top here and just lay it there so that when I need to grab it to make my move up, I'm able to get a hold of it. So a lot of people, when they one stick climb, they'll take their climbing rope and all that extra rope that they have, they'll like bunch it up and put it on one of these like roll pouches on the side of their saddle. That's fine if you wanna do that. But me personally, I like to use that rope uh, to pull things up. So uh, a lot of times my backpack's pretty heavy. It's got camera gear and all kinds of stuff in it. So uh, I like to have like a, an actual rope to pull up and I'll tie this end to my backpack so that I can pull my backpack up once I've climbed up. When, when you do that though, it means that this rope's gonna be dangling down beneath you and uh, you wanna make sure that it stays out of your way when you're climbing because you, you can get it like tangled around your feet and stuff. And an easy way to do that is I like to keep it behind me. Once I clip in here, I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, but before I do, um, the last thing that I need to do is make sure that my platform is coming up the tree with me. And uh, on the back of my saddle here, I have these little um, Molly D loops. Um, so I always have one on each side. I'll, I'll open that up and I'll just clip my platform onto that and close it up. So that's locked in place and that can hang right there on the back of my saddle while I climb and it'll be easy to access it when I get up there when I need it. All right, next up, we're gonna get our um, belay device hooked up on our climbing rope. Get that set up, just follow the directions, nice and simple. And then this part is a little less simple. Um, I like to back up my belay device with a friction hitch. This is what the manufacturer recommends, um, especially when you're using a thinner rope um, it has a lot less friction, and so it is more likely to slip, so it's really important that you get that friction hitch. So I like to use um, the Cornell's friction hitch. I'm gonna tie it on here real quick, but if you wanna see uh, in detail how to tie that, you can find a short, um, and I'll put a link right up here that you can go look at uh, to teach you how to do it. But the reason I like the Cornell's friction hitch is because um, it has the ability to be broken under load. And that's not something that you can say for every friction hitch. Uh, like if you look at a Prusik, uh, once you get your weight hanging on that Prusik, you're pretty much stuck with it. Um, but this hitch, um, once you've got your weight on it, you can still break it very easily with a single hand. Um, and that is why this is my favorite friction hitch. Put it onto the carabiner here like so, and we're gonna clip in to our saddle and we are ready to climb all right so here we are almost ready to climb the last thing that i like to do is i like to take this tag end of the rope here and to make sure that all this stays out of my way when i'm climbing i'm going to take this tag end and i'm going to lay it over my shoulder and then i'll come around the back side here and i've got another one of those little d-ring clips and i clip it through there so that it's free it moves freely through there but it just keeps it on the back side of me and more importantly when i need to get a hold of this to make an adjustment if i gotta pull up take up some slack or something like that it's easily available it's right in front of me so that's how i like to climb it's time to start climbing so foot in to the aider and up we go now this point right here this point this is the dangerous part of climbing one stick notice how my climbing rope is completely slack if i fall right now i'm falling two three feet that's not a good thing so i'm going to make this move real quick but 
this part is where you got to be really careful when you're one stick climbing because it is so inherently dangerous um, I like to climb up holding tightly to the tree with both hands and then once I'm up on my stick see now I got both feet on the stick I'm holding onto the tree tightly you just got to make sure you stay nice and secure because this is the part where you can fall and hurt yourself if that stick were to fail or if you were to slip off you could really hurt yourself so get up then I like to grab um, the quick link and then grab another piece of the rope which I can now sort of use like this now don't lean back like I'm doing right now I'm doing this for for just like demonstration purposes but I can use this now to hold on to the tree tightly with that rope and I can move it shimmy it up the tree as necessary get it as high up as you can lock it in make sure that girth hitch is tight and then to go one extra step I like to step up onto my stick this gets me just another 12 inches and then I move this again as high up as I could possibly get it and the reason I do that extra step now see I just step back down to the bottom uh, step of my stick um, the reason I do that is because I like to make sure that that rope is as high as possible when I am making my next move because it's going to minimize the amount of um, uh, it's going to minimize the amount of slack in my rope so that if I were to fall I'm minimizing how far I'm going to fall so anyway once I've got that up there like I said I always keep it off to the side this way when I go to sit into my saddle I'm hanging off to the side and it's a lot easier for me to work with my stick so now I can just reach down grab a hold of my stick give it a little tug break it free and then grab the tag end of the rope pull it out of the cam cleat and now we can move it up the tree and I'll usually put my knee against the tree like this just to give me a little bit of space to work grab the uh, the rope and the one stick just like this and I'll flick it up the tree as high as I can now a lot of people like to worry about how far they can get in a single move one sticking um, you know so they're talking about getting this thing as far up the tree as possible when you're making your move um, personally I don't care about that I don't care about how fast I can get up the tree I don't care about how big of a move I can make I care about doing it slowly quietly and I care about doing it safely so I'll get it ready for the next move once it's ready I'll pull down and get that bit into the tree and that's going to make sure that cam cleat holds on tight because you don't want that cam cleat to suddenly give out when you're putting weight on it so now that you're ready grab your uh grab your aider put your foot into it swing yourself back over and you can start climbing again so you step up and do do the same thing over and over again i'm not going to go all the way up the tree this is just for demonstration purposes so let's just say that i've gone ahead and climbed all the way up i'm going to bring this back down so normally uh, once i get to hunting height i'll kind of stop about here like i won't go all the way up um and there's a reason because i need to get my platform set so I'll kind of like stop right here and this is a great opportunity to get your platform set because I want to have my platform about here or here whatever you want to do so I'll reach around my back here and I've got my platform clipped off to my saddle there it is and we'll get that locked in I usually like to uh set them up on opposite sides so i'll have my stick over here and i'll have my platform on the other side and that's going to allow me to walk around the tree i can use this sort of as an extra step if i need to not all sticks are capable of handling that kind of side pressure but uh these standoffs from uh out on a limb are really good at it and so i've, I've gotten used to doing it but anyway the way you want to use a cam over cleat to make sure it's nice and tight 
with this pursuit platform i like to snug it down so make sure the strap is at the upper end of the platform and then uh, when you're ready to cam it over you're going to give it a couple good hard tugs to get that nice and tight and then you're going to take that that buckle and you're going to lift up a little bit like this and that locks it in place and now you're going to take that strap and i like to thread it through right here and then take that pull it all the way through like so and then you can use that strap as leverage to pull this over see how i've got it wrapped around the edge of that buckle just give that a good tug there we go just like that and that is super tight and then you just take that tag end and tuck it somewhere so that you can't accidentally undo that buckle tuck it like that and uh, now we're ready to finish our climb get my foot back into that aider and uh, climb up get our feet on there and this is the part where I was talking about this is where you want to take up some slack and it's really nice having this rope hanging over my shoulder just like this so I can take up that slack it's gonna allow me to just sit into the saddle just like this at the height that I need to be at and now I can just swing across to the other side and move this up as needed and there we are we're set up in the tree now so once i'm up here there's a couple ways to go about it but what i like to do like this is where i can like i'm relaxed i'll kind of sit back and catch my breath a little bit me personally i don't like to hunt off of the climbing rope because of the quick link it makes everything sort of uh, move around too much you can put like a little retainer thing on here so that it keeps that from sliding down but i've kind of gotten used to this and and i, I like it um, I'll take out my tether and I'll just attach it to the tree. And that way, like I can, I can kind of get it exactly where I want it to be. Um, and then once everything's comfortable, you know, like I'll get it wherever I need it to be. And these, uh, these tethers from wood hunting saddles are nice. They come with these little retention, uh, bands that tighten up that girth hitch, make it harder for it to move. So once I've got that set where I want, I'll extend that clip it onto my tether, um, tighten it up, transfer my weight to that. And then I'll take my climbing rope and I'll actually like fold it all up with a daisy chain and move it up the tree so it's out of the way. Um, and I'll keep it there um, until I'm ready to belay back down and I leave my tether on the tree. So let's say I just finished hunting, um, I hunted off this tether and I'm ready to uh, go back down the tree. So I would clip my belay device back on to my bridge unclip this and if i knew i was going to be hunting this tree again i would literally just leave my tether sitting just like this at the exact height that i was going to that i used it at last uh, so that when i get back into the tree the next day like all i have to do is get up clip in i don't have to make any adjustments because i know that's how i had it set up the day before and when you're in the dark it's nice being able to just like do it pretty quickly so let's belay down the tree and then I'll show you how I SRT back up if I'm gonna hunt it again. So I already did a short video on this, but I'll show you again. Uh, to belay down when you've got a friction hitch up top, any friction hitch, doesn't matter, but uh, this one's a Cornell's hitch. I keep this little carabiner with a piece of paracord clipped off to my saddle right here. Doesn't weigh anything. I clip that on to my climbing rope right here. And that's going to allow me to tend this knot on the way down. So I would belay like I normally do, just using the handle on my mad rock. But now I'm just going to also hold this little string with my hand while I work this. And as long as that string is shorter than the, the tag ends of that friction hitch, it's going to tend that knot and prevent it from binding up as I go down. And if I were to fall and let go of everything, then that friction hitch is still gonna catch me or the belay device will catch me. So this is a really nice little trick on how you can stay safe um, and still belay properly. So um, just like this, 
and I'll start going down. See how it tends the knot as I go? And I can just belay down no problem whatsoever. All right, so if I were to have just hunted this particular setup last night, or I'm gonna come back and hunt it in the afternoon, or I'm gonna hunt it the next morning, I would literally leave my climbing rope just like this with my belay device and everything already attached so that when I come in in the morning in the dark, I don't have to sit here and fiddle with anything. I could just walk right up, clip in, and I'm ready to climb. Um, this is how I would climb back up. And this is where that whole SRT thing comes into play. And this is my favorite way of climbing. And this is why I also carry this hand to center around with me, uh, even though I have a one stick that I can use to get up the tree. So you put your hand to center onto the rope, you take this carabiner off, and clip it through right here. Um, and then you're gonna take your rope, put it through that carabiner. And that's gonna give you a two to one ratio. When you pull on this, you're going over this carabiner and through here. So that's a two to one ratio, which means that you can use half the strength to carry my weight. And then for a foot loop, you can use a tether. I use my extra tether. I'm using this uh, extra tether, which is actually a lineman. I'll clip that on there and uh, down here at the bottom I have a girth hitch simply take the bite that's on the end and uh, girth hitch it and I'll just put that around my shoe right at the ball of my foot and it's great because it really like locks on because it's a girth hitch so that's like not coming off and so this is how I would uh, SRT climb and SRT climbing is just so incredibly simple all you got to do grab a hold of your hand ascender and lift up your foot bring that hand ascender up grab a hold right here and then just pull and step up at the same time and your belay device will automatically tend your friction hitch and it'll catch your line as you go up and you just do that over and over again lift up step up lift up step up all the way up the tree and it is so easy to do and so incredibly safe it is by far my favorite and there you are we're back on our platform. I simply take the foot loop off, take this out, and I'll just tuck that, put it back into my pouch. Usually I'll have my tether right here, clip in, unclip this, and just to be quiet in the mornings, I don't mess with any of this. I just bunch it up, rotate this around the tree, put it on the backside so that everything's out of the way and quiet, and you're ready to hunt. Just to show you how much effort this takes, when I did the one stick climbing, you can see I got my highest heart rate of the day was at 128. So that's a little more effort, but doing that SRT climb just now, I got my heart rate all the way up to 81. My resting heart rate is at 58. So it's a really easy way to climb and uh, that's why it's my favorite. All right, so now you're done hunting, it's time to go back down. So we're gonna take all our gear off. And this is one of the reasons why SRT again, shines it is so comfortable and nice to be able to go down with srt before we go down you got to make sure that you have a way of getting your rope down so i'm going to use my pull up rope to pull down i'm just going to clip that on right there so i can pull that back down so as you start going down this is why i love srt i'll go down and then when i get to where i need to work i just stop and uh, I can just hang out right here, comfortably hanging out in my saddle. And I can uh, do everything I need to do to get my gear down. And uh, personally, I don't care about making noise right now, so just drop everything out of the tree. Come back over here, take that off, and again, just drop that down the tree. And everything's off the tree now and we're ready to continue back down. So I'll grab my little tender and uh, grab your braking line and start to break that. And walk down the tree. Now all you gotta do is bring your rope down, simply give it a little tug with your pull down rope. It's down at the bottom. Pack up your stuff and you're ready to go.
right, guys, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions at all, make sure you drop them down in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do that right now. And, uh, you know, since the YouTube algorithm doesn't really like hunting content, uh, if you could do us a huge favor, click that share button down below. Send this to a friend that might be interested in this content. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, go check out some of the links in the description. Good luck this season, everybody. Season is starting, like I think, like tomorrow or the day after this video drops. Um, so uh, anybody who's getting out there in the early season, good luck. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out. What's up, everybody? It's Mark again, and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about SRT climbing. That was the sound of a tree falling over in my neighbor's yard. <laughs>